wildfire isn't likely to go down as the largest of the year, but it is likely to be the most destructive. Dozens of homes and buildings already have burned, and tonight more are in danger. The sheriff's office isn't telling people to pack up and go. They are telling them to leave everything behind and get away as quickly as possible. The Camera Peak fire started in August of 2020. And it grew to become the largest wildfire here in Colorado's history. Um, it displaced a lot of families, a lot of businesses were impacted by it. And it had a huge lasting impact to our members, our communities, and our way of life here in Northern Colorado. These major fires that we see have impacts over the course of several years, even up to a decade or more. And so we are two years after the Cameron Peak fire. We're still seeing areas uh, that are eroding. Uh, we've tried to put a lot of mulch on those areas from the helicopters. We've tried to do a lot of point mitigation to slow down some of that sediment and ash as it comes downhill and down the stream systems. So CPRW works with all kinds of organizations to multiply our impacts. That's important because, you know, five of us wouldn't get a lot done on our own, and so we can partner with folks like Poudre Valley REA and get a bunch of good volunteers out. We can plant 500 trees in a day. So today we have a really unique opportunity. We provided three days for volunteers to come out, actually get up here in our area, in the Cameron Peak Fire Burn area, um, and plant some trees. just the idea that um, these people really, what a tragedy. And to be able to give back just a little bit, to be able to help do this is great. One of the unique things about Poudre Valley REA as a local electric co-op is that we're really rooted in the communities that we serve. Uh, we have a co-op principle of concern for community and that really permeates everything that we do. We live and work here in the same communities as our service territory. So. When we see something like the Cameron Peak Fire, it really hits home, not only for how it affects our members, but you know, how it affects us too. We're pretty passionate about taking care of the area. It's just so shocking, like going up there and seeing just everything burn down. It's really important that we step up to the plate and help when we can, whether that's through financial donations or through partnerships, through opportunities for people to actually get involved, whether it's employees or members. We need these areas to remain for us because forested watersheds are highly important to our water system and water supply. And if they're not going to come back as forests on their own, that's why we're stepping in to assist. A lot of what we're focusing on right now is Ponderosa Pine. A lot of the areas that were highly burned that are in and around our communities uh, were Ponderosa Pine, Dry Mix Conifer systems and so we're looking at areas that may not recover as forest and replanting ponderosa pine in those areas. If we look around you can kind of see that there's some lodgepole seeds still on the trees so they still have a seed source here. The ponderosa on the other hand seem to get all gotten burned up and so the regeneration is really low. So we chose ponderosa as the species of our project so we can help that regeneration. In areas where we've lost the tree canopy, we're seeing a lot of sediment and erosion, ash and nutrient deposition into the streams, that kind of thing. Uh, the forest will help to slow that down. When we get trees reestablished on those sites, we get that canopy that intercepts rain events. Um, we get a better forest floor that acts as a sponge and absorbs that water and releases it slowly, rather than kind of the flashy runoff that we're seeing in some of these areas where the forest has been completely burned away. So between three days of volunteering, we hope to plant over 1,500 trees as it allows us to give back in some unique ways, but in some ways that go really far in helping our community, uh, helping our environment, and helping showcase that cooperative difference. 
does take a while to recover from these fires and we're also trying to prep for the future. Uh, we're trying to prep for a hotter, drier future. We want our watershed and our forests to be resilient in that future. And so the Coalition for the Poudre River Watershed with all of its partners is really set up to uh, think through what we need to do over the course of the next several decades uh, to make our forests and our watershed more resilient.